Welcome back everybody. In this lesson, we're gonna be looking at the geophysical properties of flowing waters, like this mountain stream. So the first characteristic we're gonna look at is stream velocity. In stream velocity, determines the nature of the bottom. In other words, what's on the bottom? Fast moving streams would have large things in the bottom like boulders. Slow moving streams might have sand or silt or clay. It's also going to determine the cross-sectional profile. A fast moving stream tends to have a V-shaped profile and a slow moving stream tends to have more of a a flat bottom to it. Stream velocity also influences oxygen levels. Fast moving water, as it tumbles over rocks and waterfalls and things like that, tends to mix with the air. And that mixing with the air gives that water higher oxygen content. So fast moving water tends to have more oxygen in it than slow moving water. It also influences the carbon dioxide levels. Carbon dioxide has a difficult time staying in water as it is. And as, it tum as water tumbles over rocks, it tends to lose its carbon dioxide. And this is gonna affect uh, the kinds of things that you find in the water. It also is gonna influence temperature. Again, because as it tumbles, it's gonna be mixing with air, it tends to evaporate more. Now, you have to understand evaporation is a cooling process. It's the reason why we sweat. And so as that water is mixing with air and it's evaporating more, it's going to be cooling the water that remains down and causing it to have a lower temperature. So all things being equal, which river would have the colder temperatures? I'm betting that you guys would probably choose this one. Now you probably would choose it because you would say, well, the mountains are colder than the flatlands. and and you are right about that. But certainly if you were to put these two streams in the same at the same elevation, you would still find that the fast moving stream, which has more evaporation taking place, would be the colder of the two. All right, the next characteristic is nature of the bottom. What are, what are we seeing on the bottom of these streams? So this is a... Um, a profile of a stream from the headwaters all the way down to say in the ocean where it's going to deposit everything. So headwaters, these are areas where streams form. They're usually in higher in elevation. And then of course the deposition then of everything that the stream is carrying is down near the ocean. So up here we see there's, a, there's higher slopes up here. And because they're higher slopes, those streams are gonna have higher energy. And that higher energy means that anything that's really small gets carried downstream. And the only thing that gets left in those streams are things that are so big that the water can't move them. And so what you find is that up in the headwaters, your fast moving streams are gonna have boulders and cobbles on the bottom, boulders being really big, cobbles being the size of maybe a football. But as the, uh, as the stream decreases in speed, as the slope decreases, the stream is gonna have less energy. And so when you get down to places like where we are in Williamsburg, in the coastal plains, the streams there uh, have long left all the boulders and cobbles back in the mountains. And the only thing they're carrying at this point are the smallest of particles, which is silt and clay, which is the reason why our streams tend to have muddy bottoms around here. So I found this great picture on the internet and I thought I'd share it with you. It's of a mountain stream. And I know it's a mountain stream because I can see white water. And, uh, and it's a fairly good sized stream. I know that because you look on the sides of the stream and there are trees, full grown trees, and they're probably about 70 feet tall. So when you know how big they are, it's easy for you to see how big the things that make up the bottom are. So in other words, we're talking about the nature of the bottom, fast moving stream, high in energy, 
the only thing that's able to drop out are very, very large particles. So you see some boulders down there, and they're, you know, they're as big as a dining room table, probably, just guessing. And then they're surrounded by other things that are look to be probably easily as big as a laundry basket or that size. So we're talking some very large particles. Where did everything else go? The sand, the silt, the clay? It's been washed downstream. There's too much energy in this river for those particles to remain. They end up in places like Williamsburg. If you go out to the James River, the James River is made up of sand and silt, depending on where you are. So, um, so that's where that, those things go. So I thought I'd share this thing with you. It kind of reminds me of a time I was in Canada. I went to Jasper National Park in, uh, in Canada, and I was standing on the banks of the Athabasca River. And, you know, as the river was rushing by, you couldn't see anything in the water because it was so full of silt from uh, from where the glaciers at the headwaters had ground the rocks there and, and it had all washed down. But I could hear this rumbling and I couldn't figure out at first where that rumbling was coming from. And then I realized what it was, was that water was moving so fast that it was rolling boulders in the water. And you just couldn't see the boulders because the water was too cloudy. So anyway, I thought I would share this with you. And the speed that, that is uh, carrying these things down uh, also determines the stream profile. So your faster water is going to gouge out the center of a stream. And it's going to give the stream sort of a triangular shape with a, a, a deeper channel right in the middle of the, of the stream. Slower streams are going to have more of a rectangular cross section. So here's a diagram demonstrating what I just talked about. So on the top, you have a stream that's in the headwaters up, up possibly in the mountains of Virginia. And as it flows, it has pretty high speed and it's gonna cut the channel out in the middle and it's gonna give a, a very sharp V shape uh, to that stream. And then, you know, the, the area around it tends to be V-shaped too, because it's cutting, it's cutting, it's cutting, and so you have these steep valleys. And then you start to slow down when you leave the mountains and you get into an area which is very much like our Piedmont. And there are there the streams still have some speed in places, but they're they're not moving quite as fast. And so you'll notice that the stream profile tends to be more of a U shape to it. And then eventually the streams get to the coastal plain where they're going to deposit their sediments. And uh, when I say sediments, I'm referring to things like sand and silt and clay because all the larger things have been left up in the mountains. And uh, in, in this area, in the coastal plain, the streams tend to be more rectangular shape. And if you've ever gone out to a stream to look for frogs or to catch fish or to do anything, You'll know that around here, you have to step off the bank and it's, a, it's like straight down to the bottom. But then once you get in the stream, the bottom is pretty flat all the way across. In other words, there's no really deep holes or anything like that. It's just all one uh, depth pretty much all the way across. So that's the nature of the bottoms and the uh, profiles of the streams in our area. Um, and it's all because of stream velocity. So before you go, here's a picture of a mountain stream. God, it's gorgeous, isn't it? Kind of reminds me of, looks almost like it might be Glacier National Park. I mean, there are places out there that look like this. So nice mountain stream. Look at the size of the boulders. Take care. Watch the video that follows this because he does a great job of describing all of, uh, all of these characteristics that we see in these streams.